Good morning, kids. Let's stand and worship together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Oh, my day. I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend in the goodness of God Today's epic video is on the story of Jonah. The Bible tells us about a man named Jonah, who was one of God's prophets. 
A prophet's job is to tell the people what God wants them to hear. So Jonah spent time preaching to people and telling them about God. Sometimes the people would listen to him, and other times they wouldn't. But either way, Jonah was doing what God had asked of him, so he felt pretty good about it. One day, God had a plan for Jonah to deliver his message once again. Except this time, he didn't ask Jonah to go to the Israelites to give them God's instructions. He told Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh. The city of Nineveh was far away, and it was full of the enemies of God's people. Why would God send me there, Jonah thought. But God cares about all people, and he wanted Jonah to tell the people that their city would be destroyed if they didn't change their ways. The only problem was this wasn't something Jonah wanted to do. The Ninevites were the enemy, and if God wanted someone to speak to them, he would have to find someone else. Or so Jonah thought. Jonah decided to run away from God. So he made his way down to the city of Jaffa and caught a boat headed for the city of Tarshish. Tarshish was a long, long ways away in the opposite direction of Nineveh. So he boarded the boat and they set sail. During their trip towards Tarshish, a huge wind came. And suddenly, they were in the middle of a big storm and the waves made the boat rock back and forth. The storm was so bad, the sailors knew they were going to sink. They all believed in different gods, so they told everyone to pray to their god and see if one of the gods would save them. But nothing happened. Finally, they noticed someone wasn't praying. Jonah was asleep in one of the rooms. So they woke him up, and they began to question him to see if it was his god that was mad. They asked him, where are you from? What did you do? Are you responsible for this? Now Jonah knew that he had disobeyed God, and the storm was the way God was speaking. He was running away from God, and now God was getting his attention. So Jonah told the men to throw him overboard, and the storm would stop. At first, the men tried to beat the storm, and they tried to get other things off the boat. But the storm just kept getting worse. So they did what Jonah said. They threw Jonah into the sea. As soon as they threw him into the sea, the storm stopped immediately and everyone on board the ship was saved. But as Jonah sank deeper and deeper into the sea, he was sure this was the end. But then a great big fish came by and swallowed him whole. Now the fish didn't eat Jonah, and when Jonah realized that he wasn't dying, he knelt down and began to pray. He admitted to God that he had disobeyed and done wrong by running away, and he thanked God for helping him out in the sea. And when God heard Jonah's prayers, God caused the big fish to spit Jonah back out onto the beach. When Jonah was safe on the beach, God asked him one more time to go and preach to the people of Nineveh. And this time, Jonah did what God asked him to do. He went to Nineveh. Jonah went to the city of Nineveh and began to preach to the people. He told them about God. He told them that because of their evil ways, their city would soon be destroyed. The people were shaken and listened to Jonah. Even the king of Nineveh listened to him. The people immediately began to change their evil ways in hopes that it wasn't too late for God to stop the coming destruction. God looked down and saw that the people were truly sorrowful, so he put a stop to the destruction and saved the city of Nineveh. It was a great day in Nineveh. The people finally learned the word of God from Jonah and were able to be saved. Obedience is a tough thing. It's not easy to obey the directions of others, especially if we think we know better. The Bible is full of stories of people who obeyed God and did great things, but there are just as many stories of those who failed to obey and paid the price. Fortunately with Jonah, we see both sides of the story. Jonah was a man of God. It was no secret. He had a great reputation. When people saw Jonah walking down the road, they automatically thought, this is a man of God. 
People trusted him. And why not? This guy was close to God, and when he spoke, it was as if God himself was speaking. Jonah knew that if God wanted him to preach repentance to the people of Nineveh, then he had every intention of saving them if they repented. And with his luck, they probably would. Then Jonah and the Israelites would be deprived of seeing the city of Nineveh destroyed at the hands of God. The people of Israel didn't like the Ninevites very well. Their experience with the Ninevites over the years had not been good. So the people who knew Jonah would have probably understood his decision not to go. Jonah knew God was faithful, and he knew that if he went to Nineveh, they might listen and turn to God. Jonah didn't like that at all, so he ran in the other direction. He got as far away as he possibly could, and he had no intention of preaching to those Ninevites. He had no intention of watching them make things right with God and being saved. God doesn't force us to be obedient. He calls us. He teaches us. He promises to help us. But he doesn't force us. He wants our obedience, but the choice has to come from us. No, God doesn't force us to be obedient, but he doesn't just leave us alone either. Jonah didn't catch that ship alone. God was right there with him. God needed some alone time with Jonah, so the storm came, and Jonah was eventually thrown overboard. God found his alone time with Jonah in the belly of that big fish. As Jonah sized up the situation, he realized he had done wrong. He had disobeyed God, and now he was in a very difficult position. Jonah repented for his disobedience in the belly of that fish, and God gave him another chance. The rest of the story went as Jonah thought it would. He preached, the people listened, and repented. God forgave them. What a wonderful result. And it happened because Jonah finally decided to obey God. So right now, go ahead and take the time to go through some of these I wonder questions. Take the time to compare them to the things you questioned about the story of Jonah and wonder where they fit in. Now as a family, take the time to answer some of these reflection questions. Answer them together, go around in a circle, so that all of you understand just what happens here in the story of Jonah.
Alright everyone, now it's time for a little bit of quiz time. What did God tell Jonah? God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and to tell them to repent. Why did Jonah run from God? He didn't want to go to Nineveh. What was Jonah's plan to get away from God? His plan was to take the boat to Tarshish, which was in the opposite direction of Nineveh. Did Jonah think that his disobedience caused the storm? Yes, he did, because he knew he disobeyed God. What did the sailors do with Jonah? The sailors threw him out of the boat and into the sea. What happened to Nineveh because Jonah finally obeyed God? Nineveh was saved from God's destruction. As we're finishing everything out, here's your last chance to memorize Deuteronomy 13.4, which is our memory verse for this week. It says, It is the Lord your God you must follow, and Him you must revere. Keep His commands and obey Him. Serve Him and hold fast to Him. And as always, if this one's too long, go ahead and memorize the underlined part, which says, It is the Lord your God you must follow. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope to catch you next week with another epic story video.